Good afternoon, YouTube land. This is Steve with Fast Motorsports. Coming today with a video about doing some golf cart seats. I probably won't go into a whole lot of detail about the actual making the covers. Uh, I do custom interior work sometimes, so I have everything here as far as a good sewing machine and all the materials I need to make seat covers. But today, what I'm really concentrating on is I'm having to cut a lot of wood, replace the wood under the seats. These golf carts, a couple of them were involved in Hurricane Ian, so they were submerged for a few days underwater. Uh, that was in our park at Little Charlie RV Park. And some of them are just from sitting outside and they get rainwater in them and stuff. And over the years, it just rots to wood. So today we're going to be cutting some wood and drying the foam out and stuff so I can go ahead and make some new covers. So let's get started on that. So I've got one piece laid out here. As you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. This was a back seat. I've got it all traced out. I'm gonna cut that out of this new wood here. I've already got a couple of these separated. There's a new piece of wood. That's gonna be for the front seat on the bottom. Uh, I got some stuff out there drying in the sun. Couple pieces. They are uh, pretty wet soaked. Let's see if I can show you another one here. I mean, this wood was literally just falling apart. This, yeah, as you can see, that's the front seat on one of them. I can just break it. That's a no good. So anyway, yeah, here goes a back seat. How you like that? That's the back seat, what's left of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some new ones out. Somebody had these, that was the original, and then they made these custom seat covers. Somebody actually paid to have these done. I'm not sure why, but I can't stand them. They made the golf cart look really nasty and crappy. So I'm going to make some new ones, and I think they'll look a lot better. I got to get the cart ready to sell, so I want it looking right. Stick around. This is another piece. This is a back. It's a four-seater, and this is the back of the back seat. And as you can see underneath there, there was no wood left. So there's really nothing to make a pattern out of. I could use a piece of foam, but I have it out there drying right now on the ground in the sun. So I'm just going to use this. It actually sits inside of this. This is just a back cover to hide where you wrap it and staple it and stuff. So I'm going to lay this on here and trace it out. And then when I go to cut it, I'm just going to cut a little smaller than the line itself. And it'll fit in here nicely. Let's get to cutting some wood. I always wear them safety glasses. We're going to be using a jigsaw on this one on the back seat part because it's got a lot of curves to it. I've just got it hanging over off the table here, and I'm just using some clamps there. Got a C-clamp down on that end so it don't fall off. Get this one cut out. Then I'll be able to slide the piece this way, and I can use the skill saw. Be able to use the good old skill saw on that because it's a lot of straights. I'll just cut the straights, use the jigsaw just to knock the corners off once I get the piece off. Got that one cut out. She fits in there. It's got a little play around it, which is good. I, the foam will keep it all the way out to the edges, but I don't want the board too tight because I have to wrap the material around and I don't want it uh, not being able to fit. I did have to do a couple little adjustments trimming around it, but she is fitting now. Got it slid out for the next cuts. Just reclamped it. Time to use the skill saw on this straight runs. Uh-oh, I hear Jasper out there talking. What is it, boy? What is it, buddy? What are you doing, little Jasper? Everybody knows Jasper the crazy man pen. And we love you, boy. 
We got that one cut out, so now it's time to get jiggy with it and cut these corners off. Then we'll use some sandpaper, sand all these edges down. I don't want nothing sticking out, cutting the vinyl or anything like that. It's not real important what you use for sandpaper. I just happen to have these old discs left over from a tool that tore up. They're like 80 grit. They're good enough just to use by hand, and it'll knock these edges down real fast. If you have a nice... You know, sometimes I'll use my Air DA from the from what I use to paint with. I uh, will knock the edges down, or even if you have an electric sander or something, that's fine. But this is what I got for now, and it'll definitely get it done. And actually, I forgot. This is a piece of foam I got to go ahead and cut out because that's going to go on this new wood here. Um, so I had to piece two pieces together. And when I get over here to the corner, it wasn't quite big enough. So when I cut this off, I'll glue this in over here and trim it out to match. And then what will happen is I've got some of this uh, like half inch. So when I actually make the cover, I'll put the half inch on top over everything. You'll never see these seams. And of course, the vinyl's pulled so tight, it's not like it'll ever come apart or anything like that. I just used a good old turkey knife. You can get these anywhere, Walmart or whatever. Order one on eBay or something. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out real quick. And that way we got something to make a cover pattern to. And also, I want to apologize for the lighting today because I'm working in the garage. I got the garage door open and it's like the sun is just shining through. I don't even really have the lights on over here yet because I'm not doing anything at the machine. I'm staying over this side. So, anyway, I'm just going to, I got my old tablecloth down so I don't get glue all over my work area. Just take some spray glue and hit that. And I'm gonna hit that. We'll let that dry for a few minutes, stick them together, set the piece of wood on top, and finish tracing out this corner because the rest is already traced out and cut out. Looking good. And then like I said, even though it'll be three pieces, when I stick the half inch thick pink stuff on the top, you'll never know. Then I come out with a little bite to eat. Little Jasper's going crazy. What is it, Jasper? Little Jasper, what are you doing, boy? You want some food, don't you? Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> you want a bite of my food? All right. Well, come back today because I didn't put in that much time yesterday. And I decided I'm going to go with this material because I'm probably going to redo these to go on my yellow golf cart. And then the ones from the yellow golf cart that looks like this, I'm just going to put on the one that I'm selling because they're good enough. Got Dad out here today helping. Got Mom over there with Jasper keeping us company. And so today what I'm doing is I usually don't use the old ones for a pattern, but since these are uh, kind of a funky shape, and I want to make sure I have enough material. I am kind of laying these out. I'm just going to do a one-piece pattern all the way around it. I just got a couple things laying on here to keep it from moving so I can stretch it out and draw. I'm just going to add another half inch all the way around it. And it should be good. And I got my other little pieces cut out. Like this one goes here. And again, I do have my match marks, got my arrows keeping everything in the right direction, got my little side ones here, and that'll be the match up there, arrows pointing, got everything numbered, this is pattern number one, I've already got one of them done over here, I don't have it stapled on yet, but this is the very back seat, and when I wrap this and pull it, it'll get rid of all these little wrinkles. We got a nice, nice stitch going on there. 
and she should look good. So I went ahead and did my line around it, about a half inch. I just eyeball it. I don't have to be perfect with that kind of stuff. Just go around it. Keep it nice and smooth is the best thing that I can say about that. Keep everything fluent and flowing. Now on this side, this is where the staples were all down through here. So I always like to just leave a little extra because it gives you some room to go ahead and pull it and wrap it around. And that's why up here, I'm not just stopping and tracing a half inch. I'm gonna go about another two inches and come right on across. That way you got something that you can wrap around and staple and then just trim that off after you're done. All right, so I made me up a couple more. This one's gonna be on the back seat here. I'll kind of get some more footage as I get them stapled on and hung. Unfortunately, I don't have my tripod with me. Uh, so being a little difficult to try to make a video while I'm holding the stuff and holding the camera, <clears throat> but I'm going to sew this one real quick. This is going to be the front seat on the bottom. And what I do is match up my match marks. Got my arrows, so I know I'm facing at the front. I'm on the right sides. Got my uh, little magnet set up again as my guide. Keep me around a half inch. Now, some people, you know, will take and cut little notches here instead of the match marks. And it is easier. That way you don't have to keep folding it back and forth like I'm doing to make sure they're lined up. But I'm kind of in a hurry today and just getting stuff done. I want these done. So you make sure your edges are lined up nice. Sorry for all the shaking and moving. Get it in there under the foot. Hold your thread. Get it started. Do a little reverse here real quick. And just make sure they're lined up. Top and bottom, feed it on through. Until you get over here near the end. Now I'd start working it around the corner. And what you wanna do is, you always plant your needle down before you do any kind of adjustments on the actual, before you go turning your material. So what I like is I've got a good servo motor instead of the old clutch style. So I can go one stitch at a time, more or less, if you work the pedal the right way. And just make sure that that uh, needle is sunk into the materials so the materials don't move when you're doing any movement, uh, trying to go around a turn or anything like that. Don't worry about a little pucker or bubble looking like that. Just keep your materials over here up against the guide and it'll all work out. Keep moving that underneath one because see that's the one that's got the curve to it. And we need that all that curve. Now we're at the end here. I'm actually past what will be on the wood. Reach over here and do a little back stitch to lock it and that's pretty much her. All right, so we're going on with it like this. Just keep your materials lined up. I'm keeping it up against the guide there so I can keep a nice half inch. Keep it lined up over here even if you got to go a little slower you just want to keep those materials lined up and again keep that needle sunk in the material whenever you're doing a movement like this with the material that way it won't move and shift and just keep feeding it even if you got a little pucker there don't worry about it because it'll work itself out as you sew it Finish up, do a little reverse at the end there to lock it, and that's pretty much it. That's how you, so you just make sure that your materials are down face to face like that. I'm making sure my marks are lined up, like so. 
If I want it to come out nice, I want it to come out real nice. Slide it under the foot here. Hold your thread, get it started, do a little back stitch to lock it in. Just keep it moving. When you get to your turns, slow down a little. You want a nice, nice stitch there. You don't have to get no hurry around it. That's where you make mistakes. So slow down, take the time, come out with a nice product. When you hit the straightaway, then you can speed up, get it to the end, do a little reverse, lift up the foot, get the needle out of the way. Now we're going to go back the other direction with it. So you can flip it. I'm going to go about half an inch or an inch over what I already started. That way I get it nice. Everything will be locked. Lock it in with a little reversing. Always keeping my eye on this edge over here, making sure both pieces of material are lined up nice. I know I'm coming up to the turn here. So I sink the needle. And I gotta reach under here because this is my sharp turn. So I'm gonna give it a little spin. One stitch at a time. Keep on turning it, keeping that material over here against that guide and both edges lined up at all times. Now we're coming into the straightaway. Zip it on through, a little lock at the end there. That's pretty much it. And then, when we open it up, we got us a nice, nice seam there. And I could throw it on the cart like that. That's a seat, that's a cover, that's how most of them are done. Now, I'm gonna go back, and move my guide, and I wanna fold this under and now I'm gonna do a real nice finish stitch here. So it's gonna look good like them other covers as you can see. So what you do is you spread it real nice and get it on here and then I'm gonna pick a spot on my foot which I've been using on all of them so they'll all be the same width because I wanna follow this seam here and keep my stitching nice and straight. That's how you come out with, again, a good product. Hold your string down, get it going, reverse the hair. And then I just want to keep this spread nice and tight. And I'm feeling, I can tell that my fold is going under the correct way. So go down through here and now I'm coming up to this turn. So I want to make sure I take my time because I want my stitch to look good on this outside. Got to keep it, keep it spread. Making sure that that fold of extra material is going to the correct side so I'm sewing through it also I'm getting close to the straightaway which I'm still not going to go too crazy down through there because uh, this is the finished product you don't want to have a mistake down through there and you don't want it walking and looking crazy. I want my gap looking good and straight. Nice and level. Also, I want my actual stitching. Each stitch, I want them nice. You gotta keep them nice and consistent. Luckily, this machine does a good job of that for me. That's the good thing about a Conso walking foot. It'll pull the material through for me and it keeps it a nice level stitch, even stitch. And I'll show you when we get finished. So we're almost done here. I'm back at the turn, the last turn here on the side. So you only got two turns. Again, making sure that I got my fold on the right side. 
back to the little bit of straightaway. Get that done, put a little reverse to lock it. Lift the needle on the foot. Might give it a little couple turns like that. Sometimes it'll rip the thread if you don't have it in the right spot. But that's it. And then we wind up with a nice stitched edge. And see that's super strong because you've got two sewn edges down through there now. Two rows of thread, so it's extra strong. A lot better and fancier than just doing your single. All right, so this is my last piece of foam. This is the front bottom, and what I did is I covered it with, sprayed a little glue, and then I always take this really thin plastic. Actually, this is for doing body work and paint on cars. It's a car masking, uh, but I had a big roll of it that I've kept over here at the shop because I don't do much body work anymore, but <clears throat> I use that because it seals it, and number one, it makes the cover slip on so much easier, especially where any of these corners are like this. It just helps it slide over very nicely over the foam instead of sticking. Number two, these seams will leak if it gets in the rain and uh, or you're washing a golf cart or anything. And see, I always do that with my boats. I always cover the seats with plastic because this seam will leak. And so I don't want the foam getting all soaked like these other ones, as you've seen when I, I don't care. It will rot that wood, and I'm not going to take that chance. So I always do that. Now I'm going to come back and just trim it right close. And go ahead, and it'll be ready for the cover. All right, so I got a couple covers made up. We're just slipping it around the foam. And then you just got to pull it nice and tight. I start in the middle here. I sunk some staples in on both sides. Flip it up. Make sure there's no wrinkles or anything. And then I just kind of pull tight as I'm working out towards the edges. Make sure I can get out as many wrinkles as I can. And start stapling. Went ahead and glued on some of this... Uh, tarp stuff that I have for making the rain covers for the boats and that'll keep the back protected and then on the front we got the plastic line in it and got the seat cover over here about to slip it on and get her stapled on pull it nice and tight we got an area in the middle here where we got to use the heat gun to make this curve and get the wrinkles out but that works pretty good all right just Pulling it out nice and tight, making sure we're getting all the wrinkles out. Just try to do whatever folds you can here to keep the wrinkles looking good on the outside here. Sometimes it's really tricky to do that. Luckily this is the very bottom so you won't see this edge. And that's the finished. Got a little wrinkle here or there, but it's not that bad. As a matter of fact, I still gotta work this a little. I might even take a staple out or two and see if I can pull it a little. I might have to grab the heat gun and put a little heat on it, but that looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> Happy with it. Happy with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'll trim this off real nice. We'll take the hide them here. And what this will do is it'll hide all them staples, and I'll have it cut nice to kind of be like that. Can you see this? Yeah. And it'll hide it. And what you do is you open that up and just staple it right in the middle. That's it. I'll take that all the way around and hide them staples. Looks good. <laughs> all right. So that's the back finished with the hide them. Kind of hides the staples and the cuts. And even that's not perfect, but got to remember we're just dealing with the golf carts and boat seats. 
They're never going to be perfect. I don't care if it's a new 200,000 plus uh, freaking beautiful boat. You know, they just don't make them perfect. And anyway, it looks pretty good to me. Pretty good from here. So now we've got a bunch of them made. And these are going on the gold one. And see this one, I don't need to hide them because i got this backing plate. So she's going to look good when she's on the yellow cart. The Hummer cart, I call it, because it matches the Hummer. And then these will go on the cellar. These are just some factory ones. I'll try to clean them up a little bit better. But we're coming along. And next is going to be this set. i got to get these on the one for the club car. So I'll show you those when they're done. All right. And even the club car, even though it uses a plastic bottom, it's not going to rot. I'm still going to spray it real quick and put the thin coat of plastic on top. Because I just don't want it soaking up all the water when it rains. Or like I said, if you wash the cart. Because these seams will leak. So that will keep it nice and protected. It will just run right off. Alright. So this is the one for the club car. And she's all stapled on. Nice and tight. Now that one, I'm going to have to clean these handles up. Pretty nasty, no slide in the sides. There's some little grooves. Matter of fact, I'll have to trim the uh, vinyl back, slip those in and put the screws back in. It should be looking right. Got the little metal hinge piece that goes on the front here. So what I'm doing to hide all these staples because this is a club car and I didn't want to wrap it all the way around the back there. So I covering up the staples with this hide them. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it because the finished product's gonna look really good. So you just keep it over the staples. I'm trying to do the staples a little sideways so it keeps it nice and flat. Plus, this is actually helping put a second row of staples through the vinyl there. So it's really keeping it all nice. And so, as you can see, then we come out with a nice seat. And it's finished. And then when it goes on the golf cart, you won't see where it's all wrapped around and stapled. I don't like to hide all that because it has a... From here over, you won't see anything. This is where it attaches to the cart, but this does hang out where it's visible. That's our golf cart seat. Looks good to me. <laughs> and here's a little bit of the finished product on the yellow golf cart that matches the Hummer. That's the seats all finished up. Nice stitching. Got it in pretty tight right here without any wrinkles and stuff looking nice nice little end caps and all on it got the back seat to match she didn't turn out too bad this one's got the flip seat little cargo bed and everything's attached nice and tight no wrinkles I like I like she turned out pretty good and then we got the club car over here I thought this one was really gonna be tricky and she turned out pretty good too I had to cut do the outside border on this one because it had such a dip here it's a and they've even got some shape here you can't see it but they're concave and uh, Turned out pretty good. Nice stitching, nice and straight. I like keeping it straight. I like having my lines. I always want my colors in line. I try to keep everything lined up. 
and then this is the one I did the binding or I'm sorry the uh, hide them on it you can see a little bit of staple here and there but overall it's a pretty nice finish on one of these club cars because if not I would have had to have wrapped it all the way in there and staple on the inside and you would see all that crap and it would have been too hard to put hide them in there so I'm glad I decided to put it on this outer edge here seals it off pretty nicely like I said they do sell a backing plate that would hide everything back here but that's just more money to spend and it looks good like that so thanks for watching and uh I hope you give me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get the little channel to grow. Thanks for checking out Vast Motorsports channel.